Joining me now for Locked On Gators is John Garcia, Sports Illustrated's Director of Football Recruiting, Locked On's Recruiting Insider. And before we get into it, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. And John, I feel like we've talked a lot 2023, a bit 2024, and over recent weeks, we've talked about 2024 becoming 2023. Yeah. Um, that's still a thing. But before we get to that, talking about someone who I, I think is more of an immediate impact kind of guy in, in Caden Jones, I desperately want him to come to Gainesville. I, I, I think that, you know, Gator's offensive line still needs a lot of help. Uh, so, so, how should we feel about the potential of Caden Jones being a Florida Gator? Well, Florida's been right in the thick of this thing for, for a long time, right? Obviously, Louisiana kid, um, the Napier staff loved him at Louisiana, where he had a scholarship offer, I believe, as a freshman or a sophomore. And that relationship or those relationships have now carried over to, to UF, where he's been a couple of times. No official visit yet. So I think that's the next kind of box to check. But I don't think he's taken an official visit anywhere, taking it extremely slow and, and kind of internally. Uh, big kid, obviously, uh, for those who don't know, six, seven, six, eight. I've seen him in person a couple of times. Every bit of that. Uh, there's there's really no, um, no other way around it. Um, intriguing, high upside offensive tackle whose best ball is, is well ahead of him, uh, which is, I think, a good thing for any school in the running for Arcade and Jones. A&M is the true co uh, competition, the competitor here. Uh, I believe he was there last weekend, so he got to see both of his top two kind of in action. Uh, both offenses at times looked really good. Uh, both um, both units got uh, pressured plenty um, as the game wore on, particularly A&M's, uh, as, as Florida uh, separated itself late in that game. So that's something that, you know, could potentially be interesting in, in just his current or updated perception of both programs and look, A&M's lost what five in a row. All of a sudden it's like uh, it's, it's a whole different feel with that group. But at the same time, his mom went there, his mentor and his uncle played football there at A&M. So a ton of ties to that program overall, but Florida again, has done as good a job as, as any school in this thing. I think the sooner he does it, it's probably more advantageous for Florida, but that's the thing. He's kind of in flux. He doesn't know, if he's going to get these officials in, could it linger into January, which would push his signing to February? You know, that's where I think it's it's really more uh, just as important as the contenders and who's in it is when this thing could go down. Um, but you always wonder this time of year, Brandon, you know, we're about a month out, month and change out from from signing day. These coaches want to be done. I mean, look, it's it's no secret. They won't say it, uh, but there's going to be not not just for Caden Jones, for a lot of these kids that are planning on maybe February, they're not sure yet, there's going to be a lot of pressure coming from these programs. Uh, not necessarily an ultimatum, hey, take it or leave it kind of thing, but there's going to be pressure to end the process because you just want it done, right? It, it almost win, lose, or draw. You're like, hey, I just want to know where we where we stand. Do we need to look at another tackle or, or are you going to be the guy? Um, so uh, oftentimes, every year, I would say, there's a group of prospects that are like, yep, I'm waiting until February, and then signing day comes in December, and you see it across Twitter, oh, look, they're off the board, signed with School X. Uh, so pressure is often the, the difference between a lot of those. And when you're a 6'8 offensive tackle with high pass blocking upside in New Orleans, it's going to be you know pretty pressure-packed in terms of how you navigate the process. Really, the only – the only thing missing is LSU in this thing, but they've beefed up their offensive line in recruiting already, right? They almost, he'd be a luxury for the Tigers, although they had offered at one point. So it's really just a matter of when Caden wants to slow the thing down. But I do think today Florida's in better shape than a and Yeah, Yeah, uh, you mentioned that coaches just want to be done. I'd imagine it's so tiring where, I mean, for Florida at least, you've got, luckily you've got a billion people on staff, but you've got, 22 commits if i'm not mistaken right now a lot of them i'm sure you're trying to get locked in and we've seen gator commits tweeting out i'm locked in you're also you know 17 18 i don't believe you at all um yeah. i think it's very hard to just shut it down like that i'd like to imagine that the coaches 
after National Signing Day will be like that picture of the lady that worked at Popeyes and she's just like sitting on the bench, just like slumped over, just just out of. I'd imagine that's what coaches are like. But um, they've spent a lot of time talking to these 2023 kids. And now you've got 2024 kids coming to 2023, like we alluded to earlier, Desmond Ricks being probably the big one that did that. But and 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 Antoine Jackson, I'm so sorry, I I am ruining that name. Uh, Miami commit reclassified from 2024 to 2023. Has Florida at least reaffirming like, hey, you have an offer from us on the table. I'm I'm fairly certain Florida's still pushing for him a little bit. We'll see what happens with it. But what's the latest on him? And especially reclassifying from 2024 to 2023, already committed to a program. How does that kind of shift someone's recruitment? Yeah, it's it's a big deal. Obviously, um, there, there's so many changes when you make that that transition, that reclassification, obviously academically you're swamped, right? You have no time to do anything because you're doubling up on classes. Maybe it's an online class that you've added. There's there's extra something in, in your academic process that is going to slow you down from recruiting. But then when it comes to recruiting, all of a sudden you're a month away from signing. So there's always this brief window where programs old and new will just try to jump back into the race. Um, Jackson's a very good player, blue chip type recruit from Dillard, can play corner, can play safety. I've seen him work nickel uh, very well over the last couple of seasons. He's played against great competition, of course, in in South Florida. Uh, So naturally, yeah, I mean, he was a Georgia commit uh, until this summer when he flipped to Miami. So really, you expect other programs to try to come in and shoot their shot because now you've taken zero officials and now you can take official visits, right? So now it's it's a whole, uh, almost a, a reopened, reset recruiting process. Although, like you said, he is verbally committed. So I do think that, of course, Miami is, is the favorite to hold on to him. I expect him to sign there as of today. But when you see the reclassification news, if, if you're school X, Florida, Georgia, any of these others, you do say, hey, you know, we, we were, we've been involved here for a while. Wonder if we should double down. And Florida's previous staff had offered Jackson uh, way back, I think, as, as an underclassman. So there has been some rapport and back and forth. So I think the timing of the current staff reoffering or affirming said scholarship offer is interesting. You know, could this be gamesmanship between Florida and Miami, which has been, you know, the funnest uh, re- recruiting rivalry to watch in the South? Uh, or could this be, hey, um, we just want to improve as much as we possibly can. Uh, loaded DB class, huge. I think, what, six guys already in the DB class with corners that profile like Jackson, right? Six foot, six one, long, rangy, versatile. You got a lot of that on the commitment list already with Jakeem Jackson, Deshaun Johnson, a bunch of other guys. Do you just want one more um, or or what's the deal in in, in that case? So I think it's pretty simple from the Florida perspective. Uh, If Jackson shows up for one of these last few games, particularly if it's an official visit, it's game on. No other way to look at it, right? It's game on even at the 11th hour, even if it's just a puncher's chance. It's totally uh, game on, and we'll see what happens in December. Uh, but until that point, I would think that he just sticks with Miami and is kind of conventional in his reclassification to to stay home and uh, play at the U. From cringing at the pump to getting an eye-popping check at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts, right in the wallet. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to upside to get started download the free upside app use my promo code locked and get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more download the free upside app use promo code locked to get five dollars or more cash back on your first purchase of ten dollars or more using the promo code locked florida gators are currently seven and a half point favorites against the south carolina gamecocks this coming saturday you know the drill Florida does not cover when they are favored. Florida does cover when they are underdogs. They're favored, seven and a half point favorites. Probably won't cover because that's what they do. I think they should cover, by the way. I will be upset if they don't cover that spread. They should win by more than a touchdown. BetOnline is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information, whether it's college football, college basketball is back as of yesterday. The NBA is in full swing and, and incredibly profitable, just saying. Shane, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all of the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. It's where 
the game starts. Yeah, um, you said that, you know, Florida, Miami recruiting wise was like the most fun recruiting. Speak for yourself. For me, um, for me. <laughs> I was say, I've been having a horrible time with it. Florida <laughs> has not won many of them. Uh, so, so not the most. Not, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. It's not over yet, but it's also it hasn't been. Good. I'm straight up not having a good time. <laughs> like that, it's as simple as that. But um, one one more kid to talk about today is Anthony Hill was committed to Texas A&M. Um, I don't know if this was the reasoning, but I'm going to take it as the reasoning. So Florida stomp him out 41 41 24, and he was just like deuces. Um, so I'm I'm gonna hope that was the reason, but. Ever since he decommitted, Florida fans have been like, hey, take a swing at him. Desperately need help so so he can contribute early on. Recently decommitted, doors obviously open. What are the chances and who is Anthony Hill as a player? Well, I'll start with the latter, Brandon. You know, Anthony Hill's a top 50 guy in the SI-99. Just he is one of my favorite assignment players and that might sound boring but look tim duncan's in the hall of fame is maybe the best power forward ever right when you are fundamental and within your responsibility consistently at that position it is something to behold and he is big physical downhill and has all the athletic traits that you want in a modern linebacker yes but he plays with such a control uh that is is mature uh he he plays with a college level mindset right now. Um, he makes plays at the right time instinctively, uh, but he's just in the right place at the right time in his gap, hitting on the right shoulder. The leverage is on point. He's just within his responsibility day in, day out. And that's the accountability you need at, at the linebacker spot, right? Especially in this day and age of college football, where there's so much read option, there's so much RPO that is designed to, to woo you and woo your eyes the wrong way. Uh, a smart, um, you know, high-level uh, competitor who can play within that responsibility is something every defense would need. So I'm a big fan, if you can't tell, of Anthony Hill. Now, that's why his recruitment has been so crazy. A uh, bunch of officials in the offseason commits to AM, as you mentioned, and, and now he decommits with a an impending Texas visit for this TCU game, college game day, all that stuff there this weekend. So naturally, Texas has all the juice, all the momentum, uh, his final two before committing to AM was Texas and Texas AM. So all of the optics and all of the tangible, remember a few weeks ago, all of the tangible is pointing to Texas in this recruitment. But as a few weeks ago taught us, that is not the be all end all in recruiting. So you do expect other programs to factor in. And this is the other part of it. When we get this close to early signing day, even the kids that feel like locks to one school what is the benefit of coming out with that verbal commitment in the next few weeks, right? Signing days in six weeks anyway, just sign with that school. Maybe you can do the hat ceremony. So in theory, there's more time and opportunity for some of these other programs to make an indent on, on Anthony Hill, including Florida, including Miami, uh, Oklahoma, USC, Bama, some of the other schools that were involved before uh, he picked uh, Jimbo Fisher's program. Now you've got a little bit more time to do it. There's no more officials in that regard. So it's going to be hard to get him on campus outside of the state of Texas. But when it comes to the in-home visits and the staffs hitting the road on their end, now all of a sudden you feel like he's worth at least checking in on. He's that good of a prospect that even if you have a puncher's chance, you've got to make that swing uh, here in the next six weeks. And why not if you're Billy Napier in Florida? You need that kind of help. And physically and mentally, Anthony Hill is the type that can come in and help you right away. Yeah, um, I, I'll say I want him. I, I, I don't, <laughs> obviously, I'll say that. So Billy, Pat, Tony, Sean Spencer, Jay Bateman, someone get over there and, and go see this kid and get him the game. So throw the bag at him. I don't care. I'm tired of losing those battles. So go make it happen. Thank you so much. This is John Garcia. Sports Illustrated's Director of Football Recruiting and Locked On's Recruiting Insider. Catch him all throughout the Locked On College Network, and he'll be here again later this week. So there's that. Sounds good. Looking forward to it.